so I'm here to tell you a little bit about a study that we did about a year ago in which we used uh, robotic non-player characters in an interactive storytelling game uh, in a group scenario with two robots and a human player. Um, so I'm as I'm sure that you all know, uh, non-player characters are computer-controlled char characters uh, with which the player can interact throughout the game. In most cases, uh, NPCs or non-player characters do not consider the player's preferences, personality traits, or emotions throughout the game. And considering these features, these user-related um, features, can increase the level of immersion, improve game experience, and by consequence, uh, increase the commercial success of the game. And um, as most, in most of the cases, in most of the games, uh, NPCs are usually virtual characters, but robots, social robots, can also serve as NPCs in game contexts. And this is one of the examples. So this is a game called um, Inner Cities, which was developed by our lab. It's a children's game where children have to... Um, they basically are the ruler of a city and they have to make decisions about uh, that city in terms of resource allocation, what kind of city do they want to have uh, in terms of sustainable, sustainability environments. And this game was also played with two children uh, and a robot which used to counsel the, the children throughout the game in making their decisions. <coughs> In their role of as NPCs, um, influencing a player's decision making uh, is very important, as NPCs might have to convince a player to engage in a certain course of action, such as taking a specific side quest or engaging in some kind of meaningful interaction throughout the game. And the robot's ability to adapt to the user traits uh, and its level of assertiveness can be an, an important factor in uh, achieving this goal. So we did a study to find out what would be the role of assertiveness uh, in, in human-robot interaction throughout our interactive uh, storytelling game, which I'll be talking a, a little bit more in detail um, in a few slides. And our first hypothesis was that display of higher levels of assertiveness would positively influence the emotional state of the player throughout the game and after the game. We also hypothesized that the player's choice in the, in the context of the game and their preference towards a specific uh, robot or NPC would be related to the level of assertiveness displayed by the NPC and their own level of assertiveness uh, and, and the congruence between the participant's level of assertiveness and the robot levels of assertiveness. Uh, finally, we hypothesize that the assertiveness level of the participant would influence the dis their decision making throughout the game. So our game was um, had the setting of a medieval city. Uh, participants played the role of the ruler of that city, and that city was being invaded by uh, a foreign enemy. And participants had to make decisions about the well-being of the city and how to combat that enemy with the help of their two robotic advisors. This is a photo of the setting of the game. Uh, participants played with two robots. They had similar embodiments, but we gave them different names so that participants could distinguish, distinguish themselves. And they had a central computer in which the game would appear and where they would make their decisions. This is the, a very boring picture of the <laughs> architecture of the game. Uh, basically, the game had uh, three essential modes. The scene generator, which would define the next scene uh, that would appear in the game based on the player's um, previous decisions on the game. We had the personality module that would define um, the personality of the robot and the next robot to intervene based on the system settings, which included the participant's personality and the robot's personality or level of assertiveness, which I will detail in a, in a few minutes. Um, <coughs> and <coughs> I'm sorry. 
Here is our manipulation. It was pre-validated in a previous study. We manipulated factors related to the pitch, the rate of the speech, the posture of the robot, and the gaze uh, of the robot. And as I said, we used Emmy's robots. You can see here an image of the same robot displaying different facial emotions that were used throughout the game to emphasize the, the verbal utterances of the robot. In terms of our procedure, in the pretest, we obviously gave participants an informed consent. We measured their personality that we then used um, as a setting throughout the game using MBTI. We measured their emotional state using PANAS questionnaire, and we measured their general perception of robots using the Godspeed questionnaire. We also asked participants to measure their own level of assertiveness in general everyday situations, and then we asked them a few uh, sociodemographic questions. After the game, uh, and the game took about 40 minutes, uh, we measured participants' emotional state after the game. We then again measured their uh, level of assertiveness throughout, uh, throughout the game. We measured again their um, perception of robots and their emotional state, as well as um, their level of assertiveness. So overall, we collected information regarding 1,220 decision points. We had about 64 participants. The number of decision points per participant was variable according to the structure of the game and the type of decision that participants made. Um, in 84% of all decision points, people did not change their decision uh, in, the, in the game. And the majority of the people who did not change their decision rated themselves as being high in assertiveness. Uh, of the few 16% uh, that changed their decisions throughout the game, the majority of those people rated themselves as being low in assertiveness. <coughs> we also found out that the less assertive robot elicited more positive emotions than the highly assertive robot. We figured out, we didn't find out any difference between different levels of assertiveness, so high and low, but we did find a difference when comparing both assertive, lev uh, both assertive robots and the robot in the control condition, which displayed a neutral combination of traits. And we found out that in most of the cases where the robot did manage to convince the player to make a different decision in the game, uh, the, the decision change was parallel to the user's personality. However, we did not find um, a, a significant effect in terms of the level of assertiveness of the participant, nor the level of assert assertiveness displayed by the, the robot in participants' uh, choice to change their decisions. Um, we... we um, speculate that in terms of the lack of affecting negative emotions, that might have to do with the floor effect, as negative emotions, the negative emotions reported were overall very low, below the middle point of the scale. So there's probably a floor effect somewhere there. And we also found out that participants uh, interacting with robots displaying different levels of assertiveness change their decisions more often than participants in the control condition. So although assertiveness might not have a role in decision change, the display of personality by the NPC certainly does. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, we have plenty of time for questions. Hi there. Oh, am, I, am I on? Yeah. Okay, hi. Um, Marie Gerald from Clemson University in the U.S. I was wondering if you had been able to, in your study, look at the types of decisions people were changing or not changing in. 
like I know for myself, if I'm doing a really simple decision, like what am I going to wear today? I have different levels of openness to other people's opinion than you were doing like a siege city. If um, you know the doors are about to come down and one robot is yelling at me to you know take up arms and charge, and the other is like, well, I don't know, maybe I might have different feelings about them. Well, yeah, we we didn't control uh, each specific decision. What we tried to do, however, is to control the level of importance of all of the decisions. So the the fact that we used the scenario where, well, the participant was the ruler of a city, um, we I kind of assumed that that would mean that the decisions made in that regard are of high importance, um, and, and all of the decisions had more or less the same level of importance. So we used binary choices. The participant had to choice, choose between A and B. Um, and all of the, the choices were vital to some aspect of the, that city well-beings uh, or the, the enemies being um, thrown away. Yeah. So you were looking specifically at highly important uh, yes. situations and yes. questions only. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, hello? Ah, yeah. uh, Adrian Schneider from Queen's University. I'm wondering, did people have any trouble with the facial expressions on the robots? Because they're from, just maybe it's clearer if that when they're in motion, but just seeing the, the still photographs, it's pretty subtle. Well, yeah, the, the movement does change a lot. Um, what I can tell you about, so we didn't ask them about their ease in recognizing the emotions, and we didn't do that because the entire process of development of these robots, which were developed in the context of a EU project, and they were tested before our study, um, involved very specific design um, elements in terms of the emotional display. I can tell you that, for example, it might be hard to tell by just the still images, but if you actually look at the video, um, they were designed with the Disney um, cartoon uh, emotional display. Um, so their emotions are, are somewhat exaggerated um, if, if you are not seeing them in a still image and their uh, ads, for example, when they are laughing, they not only open their ma mouths as they also, you know, shake their head. So, you know, maybe the still images weren't a good idea, but if you actually see a video, I think it's done brilliantly by, by the people who develop these robots. Yeah, it's very easy. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Floyd Muller, Exertion Games Lab in Australia. Um, just a yeah, quick question, because you mentioned, you talked a lot about emotions, and when you said you had the results, um, did I got it right that you were a bit disappointed that the, um, the people didn't change their opinion, uh, their decisions as much as they wanted? It sounded a bit like you went, oh, I really <laughs> wanted them to change their opinion. Is that what you were looking for? No, I... I I was expecting that to happen to a certain extent, but from a scientific point of view, I, I have no expectations and it, it shouldn't matter what I want or not. What I do know is that it's very hard for people to change their minds on anything, um, more so in issues that are considered serious or important as we attempted uh, that our decisions would be considered by participants has. So, we purpose, purposely put participants in a place where they had to make hard choices, important choices, and it's very hard to, for people to change their minds on those type of choices. I think as the first uh, person who asked me the question was saying, it's one thing if you're asking a robot, well, what should I wear today? And maybe you're more open to, to, to its suggestions. It's another thing to ask um, 
well, yeah, my city is being invaded. What can I do uh, to save it? Th those are very different types of, of um, choices, but they are the kind of choices that you would see in games, right? In games, usually the choices are very high stakes um, for in the context of the game, obviously. Um, and it's very hard to, to overall change people's minds on anything. Yeah. All right, let's Thank you.